shattered and grave. Um, in 2003, I, I left my job. I was on my way to pick up my wife from work. Um, when I got to where she works at, um, I turned the corner and all of a sudden gunfire came out of nowhere. Um, I didn't know that in that area that young men w were initiating, they were actually killing people to join a gang. Unfortunately, they chose me to kill. Um, I remember when I was had spit off from the house to try to get away from the bullets that were shooting up my Jeep, and I went as far as I could, and I, in my Jeep had I had to pull over to the side because um, one of the bullets had shot up my back tire, and uh, another bullet hit the radiator, so my radiator was was my my windshield was was smogged up from the radiator steam. And um, the police came, did an investigation, they came back, they told me what, you know, it looks like a 9mm did these holes, we're going to go check out some known gang members in the area, so they left me there. They left me there. About 15 minutes later, a AAA truck came to pick up my Jeep, and when I turned um, and saw the truck coming, I began to wave at the truck, and all of a sudden, these young men came from behind me, and they began to shoot me. When I turned around, the first bullet hit my left leg and went straight through and two more bullets followed. I kept running. I fell down beside my Jeep. Another young man came from the other side and he began to shoot me all over again. A bullet hit the ground and came up through my leg. Another bullet hit me here. Bullets went across my face and my chest. I couldn't believe. I said, enough in the name of Jesus. And I stood up and this young man was standing behind a tree. Young kid. And he had a gun pointing towards my head. And I said, why? What have I done? You don't even know me. Why would you shoot me like this? And blood was everywhere. I knew I was going to die. And I said, in the name of Jesus, you're not going to shoot me anymore. Mm. And when I said that name, Jesus, I know a lot of times we, we take that name for granted. Like, oh, that's just another name, you know, or people use, use Jesus casually. But there's actually power in that name. I'm here to tell you because the, the young man's eyes were black. And I noticed that when I said Jesus, his eyes cleared up. And all of a sudden he just lowered the gun. His hand trembled and he lowered the gun. And I said, oh my God, I know I'm going to die. It was too much blood. So I walked as far as I could until I fell down beside my... I fell down to the ground. I began to worship God in my blood. I felt my heart stopping. I felt demons laughing at me. I heard them laughing at me. You've been serving that God. Look what he let me do to you. And I had my hands up towards him. And I said, you know, though he has allowed this to happen to me, I still trust him. I still love him. I still believe in you, God. And I heard like legions of demons laughing. You've been serving that God. What kind of God would let this happen to you if he's such an awesome God? I said, because I trust him. He's a God that I can trust, that I believe is going to heal me. In spite of what I'm going through right now, I believe that God is going to heal me. He's going to bring me through this. He's going to bring me, and I held on to my faith in him. And I didn't care about what the demons were saying, laughing at me. I can even feel the presence of God around me like I usually do. But yet I said, you know what, in spite of, I'm still going to trust God. I'm going to still trust him. My heart slowed down until it finally came to a beat, to a stop. I had my hands in the air and I felt my heart stop and it dropped to the ground. I died. All of a sudden, I had an out of body experience. A lady came out of nowhere. She came beside me and she picked my head up and placed it in her lap. She said, it's going to be all right. And I'm saying to myself, she's going to get blood all over, all over her white dress because she was an older lady with white on. Them. And I said, you're going to get your dress all bloody. I'm saying it to myself. And she just rubbed my head. She said, it's going to be all right. My God, what have they done? And the third time she rubbed my head, I, my, 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 my spirit came out of the body and I floated towards these clouds. And all of a sudden, when I got to these clouds, I felt this array of love. The clouds opened. And through these clouds, I saw this huge beautiful city. I saw colors I've never seen before in my life. These beautiful radiant colors. I heard people talking. Kids were playing. The Holy Spirit said those are archangels. These sprinkles of light that was going back and forth through the city. The Holy Spirit said that those are archangels. All they do is praise God all the time. All of a sudden the voice said to me, it's not yet your time. Go back. I said, no, 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 no. I'm not going back. And he said again, your time is not yet. Go back. And the third time he said my name, Tony, your work is not yet done. I need you to go back. And all of a sudden, I, I heard a blow. And I began to go backwards. My hand was going through clouds as I went backwards. 
and I breathe. When I breathe, a doctor said it over me. He was about to throw this sheet over my head. He dropped the sheet and ran out the room. And I looked around and I couldn't believe I was back in this earth. I couldn't believe I was back here. And my heart was so hurt. And this tube was coming from my throat. I couldn't talk. My legs, my body was all bandaged. Tubes was everywhere. And I fell into a sleep. And I remember a few days later, I believe it was, I, I, I woke up and people was praying for me. My group DDT was just praying for me. Pastor Vicky and other pastors was praying for me. And all of a sudden they took me to a room called an amputation room. They marked my leg to cut off the leg. They marked the leg. They, they put a, hmm, they put a, they had this thing to my throat. They was talking about putting a box on the side of my throat. And I began to cry out, God, no, 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 God. And I had this tube in my throat. And all of a sudden, God wanted me to forgive. And I said, forgive God, look what they did to me. Look what they did to me. I said, if I ever get out of here, I I'm gonna forgive, I'm gonna do something. God said, if you forgive, I'll make you whole. So as soon as I let it go, as soon as I gave it to God, I let the hurt, the pain, I let it go. He took it from me. I said, it's not a feeling, it's a choice. So I choose to forgive. And when I chose to forgive, a warmthness came into the room and it touched my leg. And I felt stuff being mingled together in the leg. It went up to my vocal. I felt stuff being mingled together in my vocal cords. And I said, God, you said you would never leave me. And I thank you, God. I worship him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. And all of a sudden, the next morning, doctors came in the room. I felt something touch my leg and I jumped the leg. They couldn't believe that there was life in the leg. They rushed me to x-ray. And they said, we don't know what's going on. There's life in his leg. And we're going to put this box on side of your throat. But if you can say one word, we may not have to put the box there. So they pulled the tube off and told me, if you could just say one word. And I said, Jesus, my healer, my deliverer, Jesus. And they looked. And they backed up, they took a needle and thread, and they sewed the hole up. And I've been talking and praising my God ever since that time. He made me whole. He gave me everything that the devil had taken away from me. My joy, my strength, my healing, everything that the devil thought he took away from me. God gave it back to me and some. Hallelujah. So in, despite of, in spite of what I went through, I still trust God with everything because Jesus has went to prepare this place called heaven that we all shall go there someday. If you're a child of God, if you're real with your praise, if you're not faking and shaking and doing crazy stuff. What I love the most about God is that not even death can separate us from his love. I was dead for 30 minutes. I was supposed to have brain damage. I was supposed to be able to walk. His legs supposed to be cut off. No talking. And when I died, I still trusted him to death. And when I died, he still reached out to me in death and brought me back to life. What a mighty God to serve. Not even death can separate you. Hallelujah. So when you see a loved one laying in that casket dead, gone, we may say that's it. That's the end. No, it's not. It's the beginning of something greater. Because they died in Christ, if they died in Christ, if they believe that he is their savior, their deliverer, their, their healer, he can make all things possible. So I thank him. Question for you, you know, you, you say that, uh, you know, yes, you went to, to heaven and you, you died. Uh, there's so many people that want to just leave now as believers. You hear them all the time. Sometimes I'm somewhere at a, at a men's breakfast or something. I hear guys say, uh, uh, man, I just can't wait till the Lord comes back, you know, and, and I'm sick or, or I'm getting old and, and they, they just want to go and be with the Lord. But my understanding as I hear you speak is that there's prophets even in the Bible that says that they were blind. And being blind that they had the word of God locked in them. There's right. people that came for a message yes. from them. And when it came from a message from them, the people could see but did not know of God or who he was. So 
Is that true that God, when he is moving within your life, you're not done until he says you're done? There you go. It's not over. It's it's God not says over. it's over. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I hear people say that, you know, their life was snuck away from them or they died ahead of their, their time. And I believe that God is not a God that can lie or he makes mistakes. So if something happens to someone precious, like I've had death in my family that was very dear to me. And I had to accept the fact that God said, it's your time to come home with me. So if he calls us, if he, if he calls me right now, I am so ready to go home to be with the Lord because I am, I am done with this world, but I must continue to do what he wants me to do. You know, so, so you're so right, man of God. You're so right that despite of, he still loves us and he will heal, deliver, he will set us free. And there is a better place called heaven. Yes, and with that, you know, because being men that we understand that, men of God, yes. so we know that there is a fight, a good fight, a battle that still continues to go on because Christ isn't going to come back until he has that last one. Yes. So he expects us to be here as coming to get salvation and come to the Lord requires another step and that's when he calls us to be disciples you, you know go. so now that you're a disciple a man of god a pastor moving forward in the things of god i what is it that you do out 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 no in the world in the community in the middle of this warfare yeah. what did god call you to do in the middle like we have sergeants we have men that are behind certain uh uh uh, uh infantries and and holding uh the canon of scripture for certain and, and better things that god has called them to do as far as going to india different places yeah. around the world but you're here in the trenches yes, can you Lord. tell me a little bit about that yes you know uh since my incident you know um i stepped up this event that i do yearly called uh, stop the violence with tony davis and it's a national event where i reach out to cities across the country i've reached out to 78 city mayor's offices i sit by the phone my Self calling and faxing or stacks of paper to try to bring the event to their city to change the mindset of our young people. I give them options. I tell them that this is a choice, not a feeling. You know, you have to do things the right way in order to, to, to make it in this life. Shooting your brother or your sister doesn't make it the right way. You know, some, some of the kids think that, oh, this is what I got to do to survive. That's not the way you survive. That's not the way that you live by killing those that you love, those that you don't even know. Can you imagine, I mean, the hurt that I felt, this, these young men that shot me didn't even know me, yet they choose to kill me. So my mindset was, why would they do this? And I went back there. I went back to the community. I went back to where I got shot to check out why, what happened. But when I got there, when I went there a couple of months later, I found out another gang had killed these kids because they had retaliated from shooting them. But see, when you live by that sword, sometimes you will die by it, you know? They, they, they didn't, and, and I believe that God gives us chances. I believe he gives us chances after chances to repent, to change from our wicked ways. So I'm trying to change the mindset of young people to say, you can't do that. Don't live like that. I'm your brother, man. I'm here for you. You know, anytime you kill somebody or shoot somebody, it doesn't make you a bigger man. It only makes you, it makes you look bad. Like the devil is using you the more to take out somebody that you don't even know. Suppose that were your brother. Or oh, your sister, your best friend getting shot for no reason. How would you feel about that? And I'm telling you, I went to juvenile hall. I spoke to 500 young people. Then they take them out and they bring in the young ladies, 500 young ladies. And I'll tell you, man, there's, there's just, just about every eye in that building is drenched with tears. I've had young men come up to me and give their life to Christ behind that, by the hundreds. I've seen them change their mindsets. I went back to visit and they still change, they, they still live in the right way. They actually changed because of, of sharing the love, man, and being real about it. This is not a fake thing. I, I don't have time for fake. So when I, do, when I see that, those things happening and see a change happening, oh man, that thrills my life even the more. You know that, that uh, I, I, I love the way you put it in perspective because I did an, uh, a one time we, we, we go to the prisons also. We were involved with uh, Bill Glass uh, Champions for Life. We went up to Folsom Prison and the way back, it was the wee hours of the night by the time I got home. I got met up with some bloods 
and these bloods uh, wanted my parking and I was tired from the drive from up north yeah. and here I'm, I'm trying to get into my place and I found that they were right there waiting for me wow. and, and it was a racial thing the way he said it right wow. because that, they're so caught up in segregation you know what I mean yeah. and here the young man came at me and he struck me and, 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 I, and by the time I knew it I was down wow. and, and there was maybe a couple and a woman and I kept hearing them to push the woman to do more of the work and and when they were done they tried to gog my eyes out uh, they, they, they really uh, worked me up and what I, I tripped out on the most thing that that blew me away was that they walked me up the stairs I thought he was a neighbor all the time the guy that walked me up the stair he opened up the apartment put his hand in my my, my pants and got the keys out opened the door and walked me in but I couldn't see a thing. I was blinded. I went up there and I started getting water in the sink and I was throwing it over me when I hear the young man turn around and I, I, I heard him say, are you a Christian? And I recognized the voice right away because the voice was the one that said, blood's here, what's up, S.A.? Wow. You know, and I wow. knew right away, I'm, I'm here and I can't see, I'm in my own home and my wife's in the bedroom. I said, yes, I'm a Christian. And what I have in my house, I have scripture on the walls and, and I had uh, Joshua 24, 15. For as me and my, uh, as for me and uh, my house, we shall serve the Lord. And when he seen that, I heard, I, I looked, I could see like a, a, a body and, and, and just like a, out of my eyes, like a shadow, but it hit the floor hard. And he began to look up and say, forgive me, Father, forgive me, Lord. And right there, I turned around and the thing that moved him the most, I think that that was his road to Damascus that was ending because I said, I forgive you and I'm a Christian brother and I forgive you. And the young man got up and he ran out. He ran out. But I believe, I didn't see him anymore. You know, the police came way later. But the thing is, is that forgiveness, like you say, it has a lot of power behind it, you know. And, and, and I believe that that's what a lot of it has to do with us. You know, uh, there's so many things. Uh, Rayford Johnson just got this one lady that came out. He's got her on our website. Those of you that want to go on there on thugexposed.org, you can go in there and you can see it. And she has a beautiful story. I'm not going to tell you about it. I would rather have you go down there and see it. And, and, and she talks about the power of forgiveness, you know. And I believe that that's what really moves us. You know what I mean? Once we're able to forgive, even in the midst of gunfire from the enemy, you know what I mean? Even at that midst, you know. You are so right. The power of forgiveness. I mean, forgiveness can take you to a place of restoration of wholeness. You know, it, it takes it takes a burden because when you don't have when you have unforgiveness in your heart, it's like chains that you're taking around with you. That person that 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 you may have unforgiveness towards. I mean, they, they may be walking around free while you were walking around with these burdens that you know you get high blood pressure and stressed all out because you haven't forgave, or you know some people even take it to their graves and they die with unforgiveness in their hearts, and that is so so wrong you know you have to learn to just look let it go and I know some people say well you know I've been raped I've been shot I've been guess what I've been dead I've been dead it doesn't get any worse than death I was dead pronounced dead they came to my wife he's gone so right now Tony if there was the guys that shot you I don't know if they got caught or anything or they got away okay well if, if there would be the one of them left alive and if there would be that one individual that came into my house that day I'm still praying for you if you're out there Jesus loves you he's the truth the way and the life there's no other place to go you know Jesus says you can't do nothing without me you can't come on to the Father without me so if there would be something that you would want to give to maybe that one individual that was waiting in that car you know he, he might be out there. Yes. What would you tell him right now? Yes. I forgive you. I've forgiven you. I've released you. All the hurt and pain that I suffered. Everything that I've gone through. I forgive you because Jesus forgave me. My brother. I pray that you've given your life to Christ at this point. I pray that you turn from wickedness. And know that God has a purpose for your life. Not only a purpose, he has a plan. And if you just could change your mind, change your mindset, do the right things, 
Walk away from bad wrongdoing. Okay. Your brother told me I Every knee. Every tongue oh, will play. The power in the name. Power. The victory in the name. There's healing in the name. So much name. healing. Anointing in the name. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah.